Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to Needles at the Ready. Oh, crap. This is... Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. We're coming it's to... It's the 19th of March. March. We're already. Coming... Yeah, we're coming to you a day later than normal. We are. Um, What was I checking? Oh. The date, probably. But yeah. I already said it. The episode. I think this is episode 82. 82. All right. So this is... Look at me with my numbers. I know, right? This I'm like, so there. episode 82. The so, reason I knew it was the 19th is because we were just talking about it's our sister-in-law's birthday tomorrow. Oh, so happy birthday, Isabella. Happy we birthday. We love you very much. You're probably not watching this, but maybe my mom will and she'll pass along our happy messages. But we'll text you anyway. Doesn't matter. Anyway, hello. Anyway, yes, yeah, so you guys are getting like a double doses of us today. Can this you believe it? We'll come out. Can we handle it? <laughs> I don't know. We're going to be exhausted. But this will probably come out after we complete our tube dudes live spring edition 2023 so we did this back in december with yeah. um kevin boy nitz who is christopher and jamie stewart from the wool patch then it was us then michael from peace for peace crafting and then chip and aaron from fiber hustle mm -hmm. who are the two that put this together and they coordinate everything and make all the fun stuff that we post so make all our dreams come true thank you chip and aaron for putting this together and yes. keeping us on task um so ideally we would have done this yesterday and we would have given you guys much more notice but right. this is going to appear or this will be uploaded after we've already done the live. Yeah. So, However, we did post it already on YouTube like last week. So if you don't already subscribe or have notifications turned on, um, go ahead and do that right now because uh, that's how some of you folk already got um, got notified. Yeah. And so, speaking of that, thank you to all the new um, subscribers. subscribers and viewers. And welcome back to all the... Our OGs. We appreciate yeah. you all being here. Hello, OGs. And spending a ton of time with us today. I this, know. We're going to say... What are we? I think this is Don't going to be... Don't speak for me. I think this is going to be... Don't say it. A shorter episode. Okay. Damn it. Well, buckle up, because apparently it'll be three hours. I don't have a bunch. I have... Neither do I. Two finished objects and no whips. And that's just the way it goes. I only have one finished object... I have half of a finished object, but it's not like a sock or a mitten or anything like that. They're, I'm going to call them finished, but it's part, my part is finished. And Correct. then it will go into uh, another part that yes. will be finished by somebody else. All right. So we have a one couple add many things and yes. then we'll kind of jump into what we've been up to. Okay. So lovely. I should have taken the keyboard off of this a while ago. Mm, I have no room. Did y'all hear that? It's fine. Okay, so first off, um, we've been loving doing all of these giveaways. We've been doing a giveaway like almost every episode. I know. And guess what? Like, we have another we? one going on today that we're going to be giving away as well. And part of our Tube Dudes Live, oh my God, did I say it the first time? We're going to be also doing a giveaway too. So oh yeah, it'll be open for 24 hours after the end of the event, which the event ends at about 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Yes. Or Eastern Daylight Savings Time, whatever the Eastern Time Zone is, our time zone. Um, and it'll, we'll keep that link open for 24 hours. And in order to find that, you have to go and watch um, watch our video. And all the other folk who are taking part in this will also have some entries for some giveaways as well. Yes. Anyway, but for our giveaway today, no, from last time, we are giving away... This beautiful knitting gnome from Going Gnome. I had his, he's right here, my version. Can I just say, I think our lighting's fantastic today. I think it's because the sun's out. Yeah, the sun will come out. Did you see? So Annie aged pretty well. I haven't seen her I Hopefully recently. she's still alive. But I saw it on TikTok. They did like an age progression yeah. of her and how she, the, the original Andy, Annie. Um, yeah, she aged well. That was one of my favorite movies as a kid. Oh, for sure. So we're giving away uh, the foam block in order to do your uh, needle felting, which I'll show you a needle felting project in progress for me today, and the knitting gnome. So the prompt last week was to use the word gnome in, um, in one of your comments below the video. And you guys got very, very creative, and I loved all the wordplay that you did. So the winner... Oh, I was like, where did it go? So the winner of this is Sarah K. Your Just comment it. was <laughs> Just show it, go please. big or go gnome. We did have some trouble last time when we didn't. <laughs> when we do said. It. So if you're entering our giveaways 
enter with a name that you're okay with us showing. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> um, so this is you, Sarah. Go big or go gnome was her comment. And congratulations, you are our winner. So please email us at needles at the ready podcast at gmail.com with uh, your mailing address, and we'll be sure to get this over to you. Um, and speaking of giveaways, we have been lucky and we haven't experienced this, but apparently there's some spam oh, people yeah. who like leave comments and say you won stuff and that Good job, they ask for all your personal information. If you see that, it's definitely not us. We no. will never ask for anything like that. So. No. Just disregard if, like... You if you get a random comment from us on yeah. YouTube or on Instagram or any yeah, of that stuff, I, we, do not, we don't do any We of haven't been made aware of anybody being... Or somebody, like, reaching out to y'all. But if it happens, just let us know. Yeah. Um, and then for the giveaway for the app, uh, Caleb got oh. back to me yesterday. He was going to be sending out the codes to the winners today at the Great. least i think so i think there was one more that we were still waiting for lois lois carpenter i, I think so I think that yeah. was your last name yep so if that's you go back on our previous video and watch just to verify and then um shoot us a message so sarah congratulations if that's your real name uh we are so glad to get this out to you i'm so excited um to see you what you can come up with by and then your own little gnome we have a new giveaway we do have a new giveaway so Boy, we're just getting this out of the way. Like, oh no, oh, no. Kevin, why don't you let me do it? Cause he fell. Oh. That's okay. No, it's not. He's... Look at his yarn is all dirty now. He's stuffed. Hope Who's he didn't. Stuffed? He's not stuffed. Oh no, he's not stuffed. He's, he's felted. <laughs> now I've got to like reskein up his yarn. That's okay. This is the knitting gnome, by the way. That's what you want. That's what you want. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> so. Um, Corey. Oh, you, you bent him. From I Rock Knits. Corey is one of our favorite people. She is one of the kindest souls you'll ever meet. Yeah, we were lucky enough to meet Corey at Rhinebeck two years ago. And I believe she had, she had what we're showing at Rhinebeck. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, she yeah. was there for a, um, I don't know if it was a book signing, but in one of the barns there, they have a bunch of, um like table set up for people selling books and she had this book there she has sent us some copies we have one actually right here yep in our library yep so she sent us some copies we're going to give them away to you and she also sent us this lovely pillow isn't that, that she the made. sweetest thing that. so the book um she has incredible patterns she's got all sorts of patterns from hats to um cowls She's got, um, she does her patterns in bundles as well. So yeah. you can get like a hat and a cowl. And I think there's one with mitts in it as she well. She does socks as well. Mm -hmm. Her patterns are very affordable. She just talked about it on her last podcast. She did go up in price, but she's still, I think, a little bit cheaper than um, she should be because she's very, very talented. She also has a podcast. She does. It's I Rock Knits. I Rock Knits. We'll have that link down below. Um, and her website is irockknits.com, I believe. And you can see all of her patterns and books anyway. So this is the book. It's called Knit Words. And I believe we've shown this before, probably when we got our first one. Yeah. But there's so many cool options in here. Like you can do like a skirt. There are pillows, of course, and all different charts for different um, different words that are uh, pretty popular. She also had mentioned, and, and like I said, we'll have her previous episode linked down below where she talks about um, how you can kind of customize some of the words. And um, she has a program that she uses to help her do that. But if you want to um, enter, I think, what should the prompt be? Corey. Let's have the prompt be Corey. C-O-R-I. And... Um, that's I rock knits is Corey spelled backwards. C O R I. So thank you, Corey. That was really, really yes, nice of you. you. I, we love our pillow. It's going to live there. Um, and then I've got to yep. find a new home for my knitting gnome since Kevin doesn't like him there. Apparently <laughs> subconsciously. Um, and I think, I think that's pretty much all. Oh no, we have one more ad mini thing to talk about. We do. We do. It is tomorrow is the first oh. day of spring. And we did this last year, and it was really, really successful. I think we did it the, 
We might have done it two years in a row. Yeah. This might be our third year. Um, we're going to be doing a make-along, and it's basically your spring cleaning make-along. Yep. So it's the spring spring cleaning mal uh 2023 we have all of the information linked on our ravelry page which that page is also linked down below all we ask is that um the project is a whip um and then it was cast on i believe i put the date as yesterday because we were going to podcast yesterday but we didn't end up doing that so i mean give or take a day or two as long as you have the whip cast on um like today going forward, we'll count yeah. that as uh, as an entry. And that's all. Just finish one of your whips. It could be something that's been sitting around for years. It could be something that's been just, you know, cast on. And you're like, oh, I don't know if I have the motivation for this. Or you have like 12 whips like we do. Um, and you want to get rid of, get get some of them finished. Yeah, it's just a reason to get some whips done. Get yeah. them off our needles. That's it. Get some of those languishing totally. projects. And it was over. really nice because last year we had a lot of entries and a lot of stories about this whip has been, this has been a whip for like 10 years. And, yeah. you so know. So let's get them done. Get them done. All right. And this is going to be strictly on Ravelry. We don't have a Yeah, we, I don't think Instagram we did a hashtag. Like so yeah. we'll have a. We have a chatter and, and an, an FO thread. thread. So um, in order to, obviously in order to enter it in the FO thread, it has to be finished and then chatter is just for y'all to chit chat and show your progress and stuff so that's right and that's all the admin stuff so what have we done over the last two weeks nothing that's not true we didn't do we haven't done, done anything much. extravagant no but um kevin tried his hand at his first julia child recipe i did i oh. actually have a picture of it i have a picture too i think so i have a picture of your work in progress we were supposed to have dinner with some friends a couple I think last weekend, but we had the potential to have a snowstorm, so it got canceled. Yeah. But I already had the stuff to make this. So I made a book from Julie, or a book, a um, recipe from Julia Child's book, um, Mastering, like Mastering French Cooking. The Art of French Cooking. And um, you all know we had talked about it recently that we I've been obsessed with anti chef Jamie. Jamie and Julia. So I made the chocolate almond cake. It was amazing and this is kevin's delicious. work in progress picture he had everything all the mise en place mise en place whatever you say however you say it he was hard at work buttering the cake pan there was a lot of butter in this recipe there was a ton of butter surprise at Julie least child i would say at least three s- sticks are you kidding no me? at least two sticks the chocolate sauce itself had six tablespoons so that is and oh a God. stick of butter is eight so no wonder why it was so decadent i look wow yeah and i'm actually really surprised that it didn't um what's the word seize yeah the chocolate and the um butter because that's literally all the that's all the frosting was was chocolate and butter and Mm. coffee Mm. so it's Mm -hmm. actually a very easy recipe um not easy on your waistline but definitely easy going easy to make easy to make um, taste delicious. It had, you know, there were times where you got the coffee flavor a little yeah. bit or more of the almond. So it was, it was delicious. The almond was deli- was incredible. Kevin yeah. made like his own like pulverized almond flour type of thing. It was really, really Yeah, delicious. it was, it's a delicious cake. Mm-hmm. Um, so we did that. Um, but it's definitely been basketball season. So March Madness. March Madness. I know. So that's been playing nonstop at our house. Absolutely. Um, we have and... a UConn game on this evening. At Do we? 610. Oh, okay. And then, yeah, I don't know. I don't think that there was really... No, your mom's come over a couple oh, times. Oh, yeah, my mom's come over a few times, which is nice. Last my mom actually then. brought something that I'm going to show as a finished object on her behalf, though she doesn't know it, but I think it's the sweetest thing Yeah, it's ever. really cute. We'll count it as an acquisition, but um, maybe I'll show it during finished objects. Um, And I think that's about it, so let's just jump into some knitting. Oh, Right? Or do we have anything else? No, I don't think we have anything else. One thing that we forget to mention sometimes is that we have a ton of coupon codes from uh, amazingly generous uh, makers, and they're all linked down below in our show notes as well. Um, we have Knit Swag, yeah. Trilogy Yarn. This is Knit Swag um, here. We have so many do- so many cool... Oh, you know... Naughty Knitting Sacks. Um, I know exactly where you're going. I have it. Scrappy Angel. Yeah, hold on. So... 
totally want to give a shout out to uh, our friend Angel, the Scrappy Angel. We showed during Rhinebeck. So in October, probably in October, one of our podcasts in October, early November, when we did our Rhinebeck recap, we showed um, this this cool prototype that Angel was coming up with. And she gifted it to us to kind of give it a try and see um, see how we like it. And we love it. I had a pair of socks in there. It's a really fun like box it opens up to to a box you can use it as a notions pouch or you know put your knitting in there michael from peace for peace had a really cool idea of um pulling the yarn like from from the sides like he does his socks two at a time yep which was really really neat so she's kind of upgraded the the design and finalized it and they're now for sale i'm not sure if they're still on her her website right now but go check her out scrappy angel uh we'll have her shop link down below she put in some pockets, I believe, on the inside. And I think um, some elastic. Yeah. And she's named this the Michael tray. The Michael. The Michael oh, tray. The right, Mi- Michael tray? Or box? Michael box. Let me, why don't, since we have the technology, I'll go to her. We side. have the technology. Six million dollar man. Was it six million dollar man or a bionic woman that said that we have the technology? Um, I think six million dollar man. Bionic. I loved bionic woman. Me too. She had the hearing, right? Yeah, she had really good hearing. Remember the cartoon? No. Yes. Bionic 6? No. With them, Bionic Man and Bionic Woman and their kids? No. No, I don't remember her name. Um, Laura? Lauren? So this is called the Michael Box Tray. Michael Box Tray. Oh, so it was both. We were both Yeah, so... Oh, she has some still. She does have some still. She has that. Four colors. colors, A navy, a black shimmer, a camel, and a sand. Oh, the camel's beautiful. there they are um and sh- yeah she did add pockets and oh yeah look at her on the edges so see and i think some elastic if i'm not mistaken nice. so that you can kind of keep some notions there yeah you can see it there so yeah definitely check out our coupon codes below those are just some of the makers that we yeah. have um down there we've been very fortunate that um you know that friends of the podcast have given these coupon codes so that we can share it with you all yes um, and then okay so i believe that that is all we have to say about that for now um oh the was this a that came with that's for the oh yeah so the pillow um the pillow also has a pattern for um to for people to make the pillow if you want to put the the words on it that are probably part of the book but it's a standalone pattern as well it's called knit words uh pillow sachet 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 all right. Corey is so cool. Okay. Um, so let's do a transition FO. Okay. This is what I was talking about from my mom. My mom loves to, she's very, very crafty and she loves to scrapbook. And she started this scrapbook for us the weekend of Rhinebeck, I believe, after seeing some of um, our posts on Instagram and other people tagging us. She honestly, like, I won't go through, <laughs> bless you. I won't go through every <laughs> single one. God bless you. Um, and I'll keep it, bless you. Uh, Thank you. Excuse me. So she, she created like a really fun Rhinebeck, uh, 2022 memory book for us. And there's a bunch of pictures. So thank you to everybody who tagged us. Yeah. Because she followed the tag. She did. And and she printed out those pictures. So like, I don't even know sometimes where some of these pictures come from. This was absolutely. I love this is the best group of people ever. We don't need to go back down memory lane, but it's nice to have something like this to do that um, when we want to. But there's, um, she made a whole page for Nancy. Hi, Nancy. Trilogy yarns. Um, I don't know where, like, honestly, if if we are ever lucky enough to meet you guys um, in a place like you know, like Ryan Becker or really anywhere, please tag us because yeah. we're really bad at taking photos. But to be able to look back and and see some of the beautiful faces and the beautiful people that we've met, um, has like there's oh. Maddie and Kristen. From and then we, we knitting share posse, needles. or no, I'm sorry, not knitting posse. Knitters okay. League. Knitters League. Um, Wait, there's should, <laughs> is the knitting posse in here? We won't be talking about that. She couldn't find a picture of us. <laughs> <laughs> she said, um, "No." Yeah. So anyway, this was this was our podcaster's patio, uh, us with Denise. I can't even with this because this is making me emotional. I know. So when I was looking at this, I just couldn't, 
I, I couldn't handle it. Um, so, and then this, and then perfect end to a perfect weekend. Please don't cry. I know. So, mom, thank you. That was lovely. Okay. All right. So, catch, catch your breath. <clears throat> um, I guess, I guess I'll go next. I you have some finished objects. I do. I have one finished I object. I have two. Why don't you go then? Right. Are you okay? Yeah. You sure? All right. So, first one. Is my putting it on? Oh, I thought you said you're pudding. I'm like, you made pudding? No, I love pudding though. I do love pudding too. You have to make those pudding things from not pudding. What's the fancy version of pudding? <laughs> oh, I I know what you mean. What is it? Chocolate. Not a souffle. No. What is it called? Mousse. 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 All right. So I finished my. Morrow Lake Mitts from Kelborn Woolens. They are absolutely gorgeous. You did oh, such a good job. All right. I, thank you. I did, but I made a couple errors. So first is... All right. It's really... You probably can't tell. Nobody's, I'm just being don't crazy. Need... I'm just being weird. But I forgot to... On this thumb, you can kind of see over here. I switched my... um dominant color for like two rows twice on this thumb so you can see how the blue pops out a little bit more there and see how my gray stitches are smaller mm -hmm. i thought i needed to go up a needle size i was like oh maybe next time i do these i'll just go up a needle size and then when i flipped them out to weave in my ends i noticed that the gray was over the blue and i was like oh that's what i did um and then the only other thing is i had a hard time weaving in my thumb ones because there's not a lot of stitches on there yeah but i love these i love them knits. so much like i was obsessed with knitting them yeah i want to make another pair already so i have some brooklyn tweed loft in here that's my that, next pair of socks by the way what's up that's my next pair of socks this one yeah that i may um cast on another pair i've also been looking at other um like cell blue style mittens mm. to they're beautiful make, and there's a pair from skein deer that i may knit next yeah. so this we saw these at vogue knitting live and when like, we were in new york how fun is the braid the latvian braid yeah first time doing a latvian braid yeah i will say this one in particular the yarn is beautiful. i think this is a perfect first color, color work project you have, I know it looks intimidating, but it's really not. It really isn't. The chart, so you have three charts. Yeah. Four charts. One of the charts is for your thumb, but you have three charts here. You never have more than nine stitches. So I'm a little, um, what's the word? I'm a little cautious with my myth or my um, color work. So I catch my floats if. It's five stitches or more. Mm -hmm. So what I did is I'll catch it on stitch three of a five stitch repeat or five stitch um, thing. And then I will do like th kind of follow that every third stitch is where I'll catch it. So I do think I think this is a perfect first color work. I did mine on magic loop. So I never had more than like 30 stitches. And the way I broke it up was my front needle was this and then my back needle were these stitches. Yeah. So it was super easy to do. Um, I flew through the charts. One chart was 36 to 38 rows. And that was the longest chart that there was. So I that took the most time and that was the beginning chart. Mm -hmm. And then... I have a, t a good amount of yarn left over. I use yeah, the you recommended. Them. Yeah, I use the recommended yarn yep. from Kelborn Woolens. I use their camper base, so it calls for two colors of camper. I used navy heather and driftwood heather, and this is what I have left. I have about close to twenty five grams of each, so. I almost could get another mitt. Yeah. Out of them, I don't know. It would be cutting it close. It's a beautiful, I would say, mm -hmm. two ply yarn. 
it is 100% wool, so you get 200 yards, 183 meters or 50 grams. So it uses about half of that. So even if you have some scraps in the house, I think you can get away with making these. One thing I will say, I found a potential error in the chart on row 36 if you decide to make these. You're not 100% sure yet because they didn't I'm work I'm pretty fancy. confident. Yeah, but I think they, you did a good job. They emailed me or I emailed them and I haven't heard back from them regarding it. But on the chart, let's say there's, I think, 31 stitches. Mm -hmm. So you would have 15 on either side and then one stitch in the middle. And they mirror each other, the 15 and the 15. On row 36, the second 15, there was something that was off just a bit. I followed my instinct and I made it mirror the other yeah. side so that it stayed in pattern. And I think that's the way it's supposed to go. At least from looking at this, I feel like I made that. I mean, they look completely call. even. Like, it looks fantastic. So... Yeah, so again, um, Morrow Lake Mitts, the pattern is linked down below. I highly recommend. Mm -hmm. They're light, it's one size, and they fit me pretty well. Yeah. I would say maybe a little bit tight here, but I'm okay with it. I can move my hand around. Um, it's good on the thumb. Yeah. So maybe if you have bigger hands, you may want to go up a needle size just to get so on that a note, little bit with. More I width. tried Kevin's on because I was kind of stuck. Like, do do I need to? You know, is this gonna like? Is this gonna fit me? Because um, I was a little bit uncomfortable. Like when I realized that I had gone down a needle size, and a lot of you, thank you for your support and saying like, well, as long as you got gauge. Um, you know, you should be good. And I did get gauge. The problem is the gauge for the pattern is a little bit smaller than my hands. So while I did get gauge um, to make the same size that Kevin's um, making with that with that yarn or with the, uh, the that needle size, the smaller needle size, it still doesn't fit my, my hand. So I have to take mine out, which is not a problem because I was thinking like, oh, I could just give them away. But I love them so much, and after seeing Kevin's finished, yeah. I'm I'm like super jealous. I want I want them for myself. So I'm gonna be selfish. I'm gonna rip them out, and I'm gonna cast them back on again um, using going up a needle size. I think I'm gonna go to a US three. Uh, no, I'm three millimeter. I'm gonna go to a three millimeter. Okay. Because right now I think I'm knitting it on a two point two five. Uh yeah, and the pattern calls for a two point seven five. Two point seven five. Right. So okay. I'm gonna go to a three or a three point two five millimeter needle. We'll see. I think just that teeny, teeny bit of um, of size difference, I yeah. think it's going to make a, a huge impact on the sure. size of the thing that I'm going to make. Sorry, I'm trying to do like a All right, you're, thing. Well, you're up. Okay, yeah. so my finished object, I finally finished, is The Twists and Turns by Stephen West. This was his mystery knit along. I'm sure you're sick and tired of hearing me talk about it, but I'm finally done. So you will never have to hear me talk about it again. Although I love the way that it fits me. So I may be wearing this quite often. Um, I'll stand up. So this, um, this actually sits really, really well. I think, um, the, it's huge. So it starts over here. I actually don't think it's like... It's long. It's not... Yeah, it's long. It's not obnoxiously wide. No, my mom... deep. I showed my mom last week because I had... Um, I finished it... I think I finished it Friday night? Saturday, maybe? No, she came over on Saturday. Did I she? Think. I'm pretty sure. No, she came over Sunday. She did? Yeah, yeah. Um, so... Yeah, I I used La Biana May. I bought a kit from Stephen and Penelope, which is the first time that I've number one used La Biana May, and number two uh, bought a kit from Stephen and Penelope. So the I don't have much left because I used the leftover of the yarn to, and I'll show you a, a, a new project. You but, should just go into that after this. Okay. So these are the three. Oops. There's a crochet hook in here. I wonder. I wonder why. 
Um, these are the three yarns that I used, and I talked about the colors. Oh, there's another crochet up there, too. <laughs> this lighter one is called, I think it's something like Drift, Driftwood, Driftwood Graffiti from Lobby Anime. And this is on her Merino Super Sock. 100% superwash uh, merino. No, I'm sorry, 75-25. 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. And the orange, I believe, is called... Well, let's just not say I believe. Let's actually find what it's called. Rust. Rust. See? You pay attention to me when I speak, huh? Oh, my gosh. Wow, who would have hunk? And then this is Santoki, uh, which is actually a beautiful color, and that means mountain rabbit from what I, uh, what I remember. And that was the name of the kit that I, um, that was offered at Stephen and Penelope. I think it was called the yeah. Toki kit or something like that. So all in all, I'm very pleased with it. I learned a lot. Um, there were some really interesting techniques that I thought was, um, that I thought was really cool. Like, the, these braids. The braids. I wasn't sure how look. I would like them, but I think that they look really neat. I think that they Especially look... Especially once you, you capture them down the bottom here. They look cool, but mm -hmm. that that section just sucks the wind out of you. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, I agree. I fully agree. It was kind of like the shrimps from the year before, where oh it was God, just like, oh, this takes so long, yes. and it's a little bit like, ah. Oh, you know, it, it took, that took a long time for it to be section one. Typically his section ones, now mind you, that's only the third one that we've done. But section ones tend to be a little bit um, quicker. You yeah. know, like you're done with it in like two days. That took a full uh, week, if not more. Yeah, it, you know? it definitely took, it definitely took a while. Um, and I opted to do the large which is basically you can opt to finish here where the rust is, but I added the extra little um, the extra little points on the bottom. And honestly, I, I really love it. I'm really happy with my color choices. I'm actually I'm happy that I decided to do um, a kit. Yeah, to do the kit. And also like I was literally, if you guys remember, I was literally ready to frog it and I pulled it out to frog it and then i was like oh, i don't know let me no, do a couple more rows to. so um so yeah i'm happy I'm, I'm really really happy with it i i love the way that it fits it um it's good so that is that it's finally done i'm really excited i used all of the recommended needle sizes and i followed the pattern to a t okay. there are a few mistakes here or there but it's a stephen westshaw and you know you embrace your pace and all that yeah. fun stuff. So, all right. So, why don't you lead, have that lead you into? Okay. So the so next thing, um, the next thing is, we were watching, um, we share needles podcast. Our friends, um, Kristen and Maddie, they are really awesome people, I and know. we love their podcast. We love the realness that they have, um, and their just unapologetic way of embracing themselves and yeah. what they believe in and i, I just i love that yeah. so adore um, them adore them so Kristen is expecting a little one coming in april and they thought it would be really cool to get the community their community involved in um helping to put together a baby blanket and so they had mentioned it in the podcast and i'll link i'll link that podcast that episode down below if you want to get some some details i don't really want to share them here because it's not i don't know what they what they're looking for um from but we share a lot of the same community so i'm sorry i just got distracted anyway this um so she they chose a pattern they're like it's a granny square blanket kind of thing and i'm trying to find the I'm trying to find where everything lives on my Okay, so they posted this on their podcast, and I'm just going to show it here as well. Um, this is the this is the pattern. It's called Daisy and the Bluebird. She she wanted daisies in the middle of like this granny square, and to have a whole blanket full of full of these daisies that other people have crocheted. It's a crocheted blanket. 
So they gave us the measurements. They wanted it five and a half inches um, on each side. This is what it looks like. And um, there's all of the information using a uh, fingering held double, 5.5 um, millimeter crochet hook. So I needed to actually go down a hook size. So I did a five millimeter crochet hook just to meet gauge. Apparently I'm a little bit of a looser um, crocheter. So I used the leftover yarn from this guy and I put together some of these granny squares and I alternated the colors, which I actually, I, I think they're so cute. So I made six yeah, of them they total really well. and, um, and I'll show you them all. So this is one. And what I ended up doing was the colors. So the, the, uh, the outside color is the Santoki. And then I alternated and kind of flipped around what colors, um, what happened here? What colors I use for the daisy in the middle. So that's these two with the, um, the Santoki as the outside. This is the graffiti one on the outside. I think this is the right way. And that one. And then this is with the rust. These are my favorite ones. The rust on the outside. I don't know which ones are. I think I like the, I might like the driftwood on the outside. Yeah? Yeah, I like the, the light. I, you know what? I don't know. I don't know. I think they're all very adorable and they'll put them together with you know other squares that they yeah. get from their friends and um i thought i don't know i thought it would be a really cool way to use up the scraps that i had from this yeah so i had just sure. finished this shawl um and yeah i was really really excited to to help them out and uh, and take part in that so i've got to send these away to their new home and i hope that they I hope that they'll like them. So I did the six. They, this job. was such an, an easy pattern. And this was actually the first time that I've ever done a granny square. Even though I've crocheted things in the past. Yeah. I've never made a granny square before. And this one, the the pattern is a free pattern. We'll have that link down below. It's called Daisy and the Bluebird. It's, um, it's really meant for, like, you do the same, the same color. I wonder if I can find it. You do the same color. Uh, color scheme all the way through so you use a green border and then the petals are white and then the the inside is yellow so i think i have it listed here hello maybe i don't oh i thought i put it in here it will definitely be linked down below was that your stomach? I don't know. I don't think so. It could be the chair. I think it's the chair. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm just trying to find it. Where's my notes app? Thanks for your patience. I don't really know how to get out of here. <laughs> okay, Daisy and the Bluebird. Here we go. Okay, this is on Ravelry. Oh, this is for a pillow. Oh, but I guess you can make a blanket. Yeah, I would assume you could do anything you cute. want. With so it. this is kind of like what it would look like um, all together, which looks, you know, really, really sweet. Yeah. But um, yeah, so she'll have a mix of a mix of different things. And if you want to take part to watch their watch their episode or follow those directions and reach yeah, out to them, they give the so, recommended pattern yeah. and what size they want. They give a recommend a uh, recommendation for the um for the hook size so yep. yeah check them out yep and this is super soft um this, did you ever did you feel these like it doesn't feel like no it's not it's very drapey it's very soft it's squishy not it's not your grandma's uh square but it <laughs> right right it is ray ray square okay so that is that and all of my finished you know what's interesting? I wonder objects. about that. So growing up, um, I, I've talked about it before that my grandfather was a knitter and a crocheter. And my grandparents had a granny square blanket that he had made. But it was 
sunflowers. So oh. it was the same exact idea. Yeah. So it had the black and then the yellow um, petals. Mm-hmm. And then I don't remember. I feel like that. Or it had brown. I think brown and yellow and then another like darker brown. Yeah. As the, where the green would have been in that so, picture. <clears throat> I will say if you, you should probably have an understanding of. Uh, following a crochet pattern or at least kind of reading your stitches because the way that the pattern is written um, for me was a little bit different than what I'm used to. Like, for example, it would say um, it's a free pattern. So it would say something like double crochet three in the next, I don't know. It was just inter- well, what, it's hard what, to explain. What part of the pattern confused you? It didn't confuse me. It was oh. just the way that it was written. So, like, the way that it says is, um, was this the one where it had something about, like, the slip stitch? No, that was the other one. Oh, the blanket. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Just pay attention when you're doing the pattern is really basically what I'm saying. Because it's written a little bit differently than you would normally see like row one, half double crochet all around, you know, okay. row two, like whatever. It doesn't say that at all. Okay. Okay. So up next, I finished the, um, Oslo hat by petite knit. So I'm sure you all have seen this. I knit mine out of Mayak. I had the page up, but so I used, we got this in, I was going to say Ryan back and it's totally not in, um, Vogue knitting. Yes. Vogue knitting live last month when we went. So I was using the Tibetan cloud in the color. I left, you know what? I left my freaking tags at Oh, work. they're over here. No, for this one. Oh. Um, so this is in Tulipano is the colorway. It's like a orangey red. Uh, it's like an orange, but a red, but a tomato red. Um, beautiful. It's a gorgeous color. So I made the large, which maybe I shouldn't have. So the large <laughs> fits a 23 and a quarter to 24 and a half inch head. I have like a 22 and a half, but if you guys recall, when I did my initial, my original snow globe hat, I did the small and it was too tight. So I went and did the large. So I decided to try to avoid that. And I just went with the large here. And I mean, I don't know if you could tell, but this looks like it looks ridiculously huge. large, right? But and then when I put it on, if fits, I actually think the brim is supposed to, it's not folding the way that I want it. All right. So it fits well. Yeah. Right? It, it fits well. And it, like it feels, because I tried it on too, it feels really good on like your ears and around your head. Yes. But I do think I should have made a different size. <laughs> I think I should have done the next size down, which fit 21 and three quarter inch to 23 and a quarter inches. And really the main difference is, I think, the length of the hat. So this doesn't... So I feel like the circumference is what looks like it's it's wide. Both, but the circum- it's an eight... St- I think it's an eight stitch difference, if I'm not mistaken, between the two sizes. Right? Which doesn't seem like much. No. I mean, eight stitches, one... Hold on. One, two, wait, two, maybe, I yeah, I mean, I guess. I mean, it'll take away an inch, maybe. Yeah, about an inch. Right, about think. an inch or so. So, either way. I mean, pattern, the way that you are holding it like, right now makes it look like a giant. Like, this is. <laughs> Aw, it's I'm actually cute. I'm one of the seven dwarves now. Yeah, but you look cute. You're a cute dwarf. All right, so. 
I love the pattern. I know some people don't like this. And I love the yarn. I love the yarn. Yeah. Like, I love the yarn. Oh, yeah. So this is, ends up being a triple layer. So you knit a brim. A long one. A very long one. like use a lot of yarn, right? Yeah. Um, it That actually took a lot of time, the brim. Yeah. But once you put it on, you have a triple layer of. When you fold it up like that, yeah. Right here. Yeah. So, you, you, like, literally nothing's getting through this. <laughs> like, you're outside, you're staying warm. Nothing is getting through these layers. Um, what else can I say? There's a little bit of um, a different technique, which I found a video on YouTube just to talk about it. And then once they, she had mentioned what she did, I was like, oh, this makes sense. Mm-hmm. So super easy. I will be making more of these. I have some other Mayak that I may use for it that I initially bought for this and then changed my mind and it was going to be something else. And now it's not because I don't like the way it's knitting up. Um, so yeah, so Oslo hat, fantastic pattern. If you like a, like a sock head or... If you like knitting the muscle burr, I think this is another good option for you. It um, It's just all knitting, right? You do one roll of pearls. Yep. Uh, do you do a roll of pearl before no. you roll it before you fold it? Oh. No. There's no purling. It's all knits. Nice. Correct. I am correct in that statement. Good job. I have yarn for to make one, so I'll this is good because I'll go down. I thought you were doing the ant hat that no. Kim's doing. Nope. I'm doing the Oslo. Oh, that's right. You're going to hold it double. I'm going to hold it double in Marlet because I got... You're knitting yours in the same yarn, but holding it double with their baby yak. Yeah, so why would I do that and not use the same yarn? Because the pattern itself is meant... To, well, not meant to. It does recommend using a yarn with another one held to, oh. with it, so to hold it double... I decided not to do this, and I think it worked out fine. Yeah. Worked out fine. This yarn is a sport light DK. You know what? Maybe you went, maybe you went, you should have gone down a needle size because you're only holding the one strand of yarn. No, because you you would be holding, um, I think, a sport weight in a yeah. thing. So maybe your fabric, I mean, your fabric looks really good. I don't Hold know. on, I'm checking now. Um, it's so soft. This yarn is absolutely amazing. So it says, note that two strands of yarn are held are together we? throughout and that the gauge given is the total yardage needed. So, you need about 150 grams. Wow. Of one, and then this one was held... Yeah, I don't. Oh, maybe they held two two grams of that together, or Sunday by Sandsgarn, which would be a fifty gram. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Either way, it's beautiful. Mayhaps yeah. a little on the large end. It is. But... I I may give that one away to somebody who has a lot of hair. It's a good idea. Like I feel like if you have a lot of hair, that would that size could work well for you. Yeah. Um, I kind of like that look though on you. What when the, it's like super slouchy? The seven doors yeah, look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Yeah. Thank you though. Okay. Um. So yeah, that's all I. That's actually all that I have. I don't have any whips. You don't have any whips? No. I have a few. I attempted to cast on a few things. Three or four items, and it just didn't work out. Mm-hmm. So I took them all out. I did knit on that baby blanket, but I actually am toying with taking that out. Are you kidding? Because it's yeah. just not bringing me joy. Okay. You so know I what? So I may end up taking that out. It's fine. And fine. I had noticed that I was missing. Um, so I do love knitting with Buttercup Cotton, yeah. which is no longer available. I know. Pearl Soho doesn't sell it anymore. I know. Although they do have other cottons. Um, did you send that out, by the way? No. Oh. But I have noticed where I missed some strands of the plies what i'm knitting and oh. it's annoying me so i would need to go back and fix those anyway so i may just take it out hit the reset button i'm taking out all my whips <laughs> i'm taking them back i'm taking them all back 
This is my dream. My wish. Well, my wish. And it didn't come true. Taking him back. <laughs> all right. Um, this tea is gross, and I believe I had asked you all to remind me not to drink this tea again. What tea is it? This is the caramel. Oh, it's disgusting. Coconut. Yeah, we should just throw it out. It's actually really bad. Yeah. It's supposed to mimic. The Girl Scout cookies, Samoa, not totally good. doesn't. Not good. No, no, it leaves a lot to be desired. It really does. All right, so I have four whips. I'm just gonna sit back whips. and relax now. Oh shit, I have five. I have five whips. I know you have been on. How a is that possible? Because I don't, I don't know. Because you say you're gonna do stuff. Yeah. And you overcommit. I've only committed to one thing, technically. Well, this is I. I didn't work on one whip. It's still downstairs, so I'm not going to show it. We'll just jump right in. Totally fine. Let's stay on the... We'll do the crochet um, train. This is my 12-point star baby blanket that I'm knitting for um, one babies. of my babies. Not one of my babies. One of my coworkers that and he and his wife are having a baby. and then Oh, this that's is, for them? Yeah, this one is for them. And then the... Because I was using this as a prototype before gotcha. the other ones. And then I'm going to be doing two more of them um, with alternating uh, color in between. So this is what I've gotten so far. I think last time I had just started the green. So I finished the green and I started the blue. And I'm going to do this in a rainbow. Um, so you can see it's a 12-point star. And it's a lot of fun. It's a very easy pattern. Uh, all of the yarn that I'm using is Karen Simple, Simply Soft in various uh, rainbow colors. So I think this one's just called Red. This one's called Pumpkin. This one I think is called Sunshine. This is Kelly Green. And then this blue is called... Gray Blue? No, Country Blue. So oh, that's I can see. Country Blue, okay. this one here. Yep. And then the gray in be in the middle is kind of like a bluish gray that is i believe called silver i could be wrong feathered gray feathered feathered okay yeah feathered gray this is the gray but i think it's kind of silvery don't you think it looks silvery yeah and i think too because it's it's it, acrylic so it probably it, it does have has like a, a shine to it yeah. yeah so um so this is the front side of the blanket and that's it. I'm just kind of crocheting this as I, you know, as I get some time in the mornings. It's easier for me to crochet in the mornings just to like do a row, because um, I have to. I still I have to look at my crochet, but yeah. they're all the colors together. Very they look nice. cute, right? Yeah. 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 It's an untraditional rainbow. Rainbow. Yeah. Um, but it's, you still get the rainbow vibes, right? Yes. Okay. And I'm using the uh, a five millimeter H crochet hook. This is by Clover. The Amour set? Yes. Yeah. Which is my favorite um, my favorite crochet. And what's it living in? This is living in a prototype chip basket. Um, there may have been some rumors abound that the Fiber Hustle fellas are um, beginning their testing of getting their shop up and running. And there may maybe. have been some orders um, out of their shop. And maybe on their way. Yeah, so if you signed up for their mailing list like we on told their you website to. at fiberhustle.com, you may receive some notification that there's yes. some like availability of some mm -hmm. products. I don't so know. So we may have more to talk about in on two that weeks. front in two weeks. Maybe. So this is the prototype. Um, we've had this for a while. A lot of you have asked where you can get them. Um, please visit fiberhustle.com yes. for all of the deets. All right. Okay, so that's one. Okay. Okay, let's do... Uh, I just, I really, I'm just going to relax. Maybe I'll read. I will, I'll be quick about them. Maybe I should read a book. This is, you can read a book. No. This is um, living in this beautiful Le Garçon bag that we got. Um, who's the, what's the brand? Hide and Hammer. Oh yeah, duh, it's their Hide and Hammer bag. I don't know what number this is. I, Seven it's, or something I like that. Don't it might think, be something. If I'm not mistaken, Hide and Hammer doesn't have that bag. Oh no! Oh, it's no, only exclusive. I, I don't think so. It's absolutely gorgeous. Waxed canvas. I'm gonna look. Well, anyway, living in here is a new cast on that you have not seen yet before from me. 
However, Kevin has knit quite a few of these. This is the Hatch Hat by Emily Green. No, not Emily Green. Yeah, Emily Green. Yeah. And... Mm. So no, they... not Emily Green. Is it at Brooklyn Tweed? Emily Brooklyn Green. Tweed, Emily Duh. Green. Yeah. This is Hatch. There are two versions. There is a uh, watch cap version and a beanie version. I'm knitting the watch cap version. And I'm sorry, I'm going to go back. So Hyden Hammer has one that's similar in style, but not exactly like that. It's leather and canvas. It's oh. their cross body. This is leather. So it's... Um, some leather in there. But they're b the bottom of their... Um, this is what it... Oh, I see. Right? So this is Ooh, that's what it looks like from Hyde and Hammer. So it's a different Ooh. style, like, look. Um, but it's a beautiful bag. And it's it a beautiful a bag. Yeah. So I am... I got this yarn at... Knit New Haven. Knit New Haven. Right. And I cast I cast it on. And I... With the project, I think that I was... And I, that I had the project in mind. I think so, yeah. So, um... Boom, boom, boom. This is Kelborn Woolen's Scout in the colorway Teal Heather. Isn't that a gorgeous color? Yeah, it's a it, it's a nice... Um... Yeah. So I'm doing the watch cap version. Oh, you are. You're not going to do... Wait. That's what? the folded brim. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. And this is what I've got. It knit up absolutely... It's stunning. The yarn is lovely to work with. It's very squishy. Yeah. Very it's soft. It's going to block beautifully. It is incredible. The, um, you know, there's, it's it's really all ribbing. So you got one by one, you got a three by three by one and a two by two. And this is four inches of one by one ribbing. It really wasn't terrible. No, it really not. wasn't. The, I think, you know, the yarn Definitely plays a huge role in that when you find yarn that is just so fun and easy to like knit with. You just want to keep going. And the fabric that it created was absolutely, is absolutely gorgeous. And it being a DK on larger needles, yeah. it's very different than knitting the sock head slouch. That oh, yeah. four inches of ribbing feels is a very much different. different feel. Yeah, it feels very different. It probably makes a difference with the type of yarn too. But this is a um, cabled cast on. Made a very nice edge. I have to say, and it's very stretchy. Yeah. So this is going to be folded up, and I think it's going to look really nice when, you know, like create that that really nice line, that really nice edge. Yeah, it's probably my it favorite. Yeah. Like Aaron and I love that hat. It's yeah. Probably my most worn is my hatch hat. Um. So I believe this is one size. Yes. Um, and I feel like I'm having no trouble whatsoever. I'm using the recommended needle size. Is it a which is I think it's a th three millimeter. Oh dear, these are these are actually Addies. It's not on the needle. So it's, it's on not the on the needle. So oh. I'm not 100 percent sure, but I'm pretty sure I'm using the recommended ne recommended needles. Imagine if I pulled out my all my stitches. I don't know. Um, the Hatch Hat. Oh, thanks, you know what? Thanks, I, Kev. And I'm sorry, I forgot to. Um, it is a US three a three point two five. two five millimeter. And going back, because I did not mention that, is the Oslo hat is knit on a US four, which is a three point five millimeter. And then my mitts, I don't know if I said it, are knit on a two point seven five millimeter. So that should be a US two. Oh, I think, right? Okay, I'm getting a little warm. Okay, now, so that was that. Next up, well, we're flying through these. Next up, I will, let's do this, because this is large. Um, this is a felting project, and I thought it would be really cool to create a little, like, felting station um, that lives on our dining room table. And... I have on a tray, I can bring this out to the couch and sit this on my lap if I wanted to. I haven't done that yet though. But this is my um, this is my setup for for needle felting now. And this is from Ikea. This is from Ikea. The tray is from Ikea. No expenses spared to make this happen. Um, this, I'm working on the sloth from Going Gnome. This is part of the Mystery Kit Club 2023. 
2022. And I think I'm still waiting for one more. Am I? No, because you got the... Am I done? Blue Footed Booby. Yep. The Aardvarky Anteater looking thing. Um, that's an Elephant Shrew. Elephant Shrew. Sloth. And that's it. So there should be one more coming. I think it's supposed to be coming in, in March or April. Really? Yeah. So this is how this is how and I've showed this before, but this is kind of how everything comes in the kit. You've got the different colors um all separated for you. It smells delicious and super super sheepy. Um I did opt for some extra needles. Yeah, you for mine. So got that's that my setup. I got uh, that at Rhinebeck. No, you got it at New England. I did get that at New England. You're absolutely right. Um, and then, so here's what, here's the sloth so far. This is what I have is his body. Look at his belly. That's his belly. Oh, he's got a big belly. He's going to have a big belly. Yeah. He's got a small head. Small head, big belly. Um, I just started the, I think these are the legs. So these will come out. I have to do some more arms in this color. And then, you know, shape the face. And it, this kit came with um, eyes, and you probably can't see, and a cute little nose oh, nice. to be glued on there. So I'm just, you know, I feel like I haven't had much of a chance to work on this. I only worked on this for maybe an hour, if that. Um, I added some additional colors in there, too. And um, so it's just kind of sitting there waiting for me whenever I'm ready. So that's kind of, that's my setup for needle felting now. I thought that was really clever of me to kind of put it all together on good job tray. thanks so the tray is kind of like a test run for when i get my dragon kit started because that's yes. going to take up a lot of time and space speaking of trays can we just talk about these oh i again? know they're my favorite so these are from thread and maple yeah right and they're actually meant for your phone yeah i have mine here and then they're magnetic so it holds all your magnetic stitch markers yeah. um, or progress keepers or darning needles. and I keep a T-pin in mine as well. Needle um, tightener thingamajiggers. Yep. You have a darning needle in there? Um, I do I not have a currently. needle in mine as well, just in case, because you never know. A large one. Okay. All right, what else you got? I only have two more to talk about. Okay. See how? Um, okay. The next one... So my, my goals from the last podcast was to, number one, finish the twists and turns. Check. And number two was to split for sleeves on my Dustlin sweater. So the next, so I will show you where I got on the Dustlin sweater. I did split for sleeves, but I didn't do much more than that. It felt like a ton of knitting to me, but it doesn't look like a ton of knitting. So um, I will show you the pattern again and what it's supposed to look like. This is the Dustlin sweater by Stephen West. It's a beautiful textured pattern, uh, textured sweater, circular round yoke. Um, and here's what I have, and then I'll show you the yarn afterwards. So this is what I've got so far. I did split for sleeves. Um, and then, so here and here. I put these on the uh, barber cords, the what pony, is pony, pony bead, bead lacing, lacing cords, the cheaper version of the those things. And so I was here last time. Okay. So I knit uh, two full sections, split for sleeves, knit two full sections, um, and then I'm ready to start my my next section. So I love. I love that you I love this yarn. You can really see the stitch definition here on it. I thought there was like a seam or something that I just saw. Oh here. Where? Here. Yeah, you're beginning around. Yeah, so I'm I'm I maybe I should slip that first stitch before I start so that the seam doesn't go all the way down the back. I just saw that. See? No, it's, it's very like uneven or something. It's I, yeah, I mean, knitting in the round, you're yeah. knitting in a spiral. Right. So that's just the, yeah. I'm the wondering, nature Maybe of, it's not that noticeable. No, and I think, uh, actually, I feel like in the pictures of the sweater, you it even on him, you can tell you that can. there's a bit of a seam down the oh, back. Oh, okay. Yeah. 
So this is what I've got. I'm I'm really pleased with it. I love the color. This is using um, Mota by uh, Wool Dreamers. It's um, recycled, basically like saved wool from the Manchetta sheep. Yeah, it's it's wool that would not have been used otherwise. Yeah. Um, I believe they said like it's discarded or burned. Mm -hmm. um, so they wanted to find a uh, eco-friendly way to use that. And they found this blend and the yarn comes in two shades on a gray base and a white base. Um, we kind of talked about it last time. It's kind of like Brooklyn Tweeds yeah. tones. Yep, a little bit like that. Um, so, so this is the um, with the gray base. So you can see that it's kind of like heathered mm -hmm. almost. And the, um, the, the com I don't know, comparable color i guess the one that's laying on, on the white base is more of a like a pure blue, baby blue like yeah a bright brighter blue so i just i love this i think the yarn has been incredible to work with i haven't had any issues whatsoever i'm really excited to soak this and see like what happens because it's it's a little rough um but like it's very springy it is. It, um, I feel like most yarns feel yeah rough, right before a blocking. Yeah. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to wear this next to skin. I usually wear a t-shirt under my sweaters anyway. Mm -hmm. But I am. I am absolutely loving this. It's going to be super warm. It's very very lightweight because mm -hmm. the yarn is like is so airy and and light on its own. Yeah, that was I think one of the things that sold you when we were at Vogue is that. They had a sample. Yeah. And that's why it's so important to have samples. Oh, it's so good. But it, they, they like suck you in too. Yeah. Um, they sure do. But they showed you. I am a sucker for a sample. The dust lend in the Moda yarn. Mm -hmm. And it was super light. It was a much, oh, yeah. it was a smaller version. Yeah. Um, but I think that's what ended up selling you on buying the it yarn. Because I've been wanting to knit this pattern for a while. I just kind yeah, of. Yeah, we like, had it. Yeah, I just kind of filed it away. Yeah. Um, and seeing that yarn, and I, I think it couldn't have been, it couldn't be better. Like, look at the stitch definition. I think it looks absolutely incredible. Yeah. I'm eating, I'm knitting these on a US 7, 4.5 millimeter needles, the recommended um, needle gate, needle size. I did not do a gauge swatch. It's not a thing. <laughs> and I'm knitting the 44 inch, 44 inch, I believe. Okay. Chest, or maybe the 47 because i wanted really? to do you wanted that much i mean um that would get you up five five inches of positive, positive ease. ease and i think that's what the pet the sweater calls for okay let me just double check just so that i don't have any so i don't give you the wrong information you know what i love about this if we talk about this like when we use good notes i put all of my active projects on my favorites list yeah and so i could just kind of hit the favorites to go into those um to those projects one, two, three. I'm knitting the fourth size. Okay. Which is four. He actually did change that. Um. He did. Yeah, and I don't. For remember. a finished measurement of forty-seven inches, so yeah, okay. so I'm doing about a five and in, five inches of positive ease. Um, four to five inches, depending on the day and how much I've eaten the day before. Okay. Okay. So that is the Dustlin sweater. I'm very excited about it. I'm happy now that I split for sleeves. So it's like 100 stitches less now to go around and around. I know. That's such the benefit of yeah. sleeve separation. What I might end up doing is doing uh, one or two more sections and then doing a sleeve. So that at the end of the you know pattern, I will have the sleeves done. And then I can oh, just okay. finish the, the body. So that's kind of what I was thinking of. All right. All right, and then the and last keep on going. The last one is a cast on from yesterday, and um, this is a test knit that I'm doing for Beth McDonald Stone. She posted on Instagram looking for some test knitters, and we had spoken when we went out to dinner. We talked a little bit about um, about this sweater and that she would be asking for testers sometime this year and or this month, and we said, yeah, let us know. And she let us know, and I'm really excited to have been chosen as a test knitter for it. So this is basically um, the pattern. I don't know why I went to my phone when I have my... I, 
that's right my ipad here the parish lines sweater this is 2.0 so she has a parish lines sweater um more um kind of more in line with a female body type and so she wanted to do a companion piece with male body um in mind so she knit the parish line sweater designed this parish line sweater this is um her beautiful model there and it's called parish line sweater 2.0 and she's hoping to have this out, I think, by like May or June-ish, somewhere around there. And I cast this on yesterday. We've had this yarn sitting around. Kevin has an idea of already what to do with his. But we each got a cone of... Um, Pulse yarn. Pulse yarn. Super soft. So I got a slate gray. It's... The pattern is super interesting. I actually contacted her because I thought that there was already a mistake in the pattern. Because it asks for your main color to be fingering weight and your contrast to be in worsted weight. I'm like, that can't possibly be true. It's true. She says that it helps um, really pop out that color work. So um, this is my main color. And then I'm using Wool of the Andes worsted in a... Shoot on the front. Yeah. Do dove heather. I thought that these two looked really cool together. They're definitely a high contrast. I actually can show you. I took a picture, and I'll show you. I'll show you what I have. I don't have much, um, so far. But I took a picture of the all the yarns together because I had pulled out quite a few colors that I wanted to see. You know how well that they would go, and I was kind of leaning towards that like that color there, like one of those colors there. The oatmeal? The, or the, not the, the orange yeah. color. I thought that, that might look, yeah, that, I thought that might look kind of cool or maybe like one of these like deeper blues. So what I ended up doing was um, I ended up editing them or like uh, making them black and white. Uh, is it? Just to see like where the contrasts were going to be. And so the colors, like this color here, was not um, a very high contrast. Neither was right. this one or this one here. So my my um, my two options were going to be these two colors on the left. And so I ended up going with the one in the front because it was a higher... You went with the one in the back. The one in the front is oatmeal. That's oh, yeah, the one in the back. Sorry, I, I was backwards on my... So I went with this one. Yeah. So, yeah, because then the other one was like an oatmeal -y color. And I was like, that mm. was the color that you used in your... Um, Vincent's pattern. Yeah. The... Uh, Montrealer. Yes, yes. So I thought it would be cool, and I'm really glad that I did that because I like how it looks. The collar, or the... Yeah, the collar is a folded brim folded uh folded collar with mm -hmm. um the one by one color work excuse me and this is what i have nice so i think it looks really cool and i love the colors i think or look they're really contrasty i think they're gonna look really really nice together so yeah that's worsted weight with the fingering weight in between so you knit um you know one by one rib and then this is not ribbing this is just one by one color work which i thought was really really clever and um this will be the this will be the collar i did um i don't know if i want to call it a swatch i did a little test strip just to see how the yarn would behave because you hear a lot about this yarn and that it's kind of crunchy and difficult to work with which it is at first um, and I wanted to see how it would behave once it's washed because that's when they people say that the really the magic happens and it does it's definitely a, a lot softer and the um, the stitches I wish I had taken a before picture um, it's, the stitches definitely bloomed yeah it quite almost a bit. looked like twine yeah when you were prior to blocking oh yeah it. so um, it's so you can kind of see like different that's the it's very very thin there um but this the stitches definitely they definitely bloom and they get a lot bigger yeah because it has so, all the spinning oil in it yeah and that's why it's so inexpensive yep. is it's not like so it probably could be washed another time i wash this like three times you can wash it more so yeah what, what we hear is using dawn 
because Dawn mm-hmm. removes grease, so it would help remove the oils but look at, from look it. How plump it got, and it would allow it to, um, yeah, to bloom. To bloom. So I think it'll be really cool because it'll really fill in those spaces. Um, I just did my first increase round. Who else did we just watch? This is was... a circular yoke. Oh yeah, because it's color. It's going to be all color. It's was it Sam? Yolk. Right, Sam from Irish Knitting Podcast had just knit one. Yeah. Or an episode that we had just watched of his, he talked about um the holes and how it's like crunchy, but he washed his the more you wash it, the, the softer it, it gets. So yeah. even after one or two washes, yep. it may not be to your liking. So you may have to continue to wash it. And he said to be aggressive with the washing. Yeah, I just don't want it to felt, but we'll see what happens. Well, you don't have to agitate it. Yeah. Because this is also non superwash as well, the wool of the Andes. Um Peruvian high Highland wool. And um yeah i don't know i think that this looks really neat i love the contrast i'm very excited about it so the um her husband in the picture it, the that sweater is a very low contrast yes so i was really interested to see the high contrast because if you look at the female version of the sweater at least for me because i have difficulty with colors in anyway so that sweater um with him in it looked a little bit it was a little bit difficult for me to see the two different colors there Parish line sweater. So, like, look, I think that the the higher contrast looks really cool. Yeah, yeah. It, you know, what's actually really cool about it in that particular photo? It almost looks like she's wearing like a shrug or like yeah. a cowl over yeah, yeah. a darker sweater. Yeah. So that's really nice. So I really kind of was going for that look, that higher contrast. But you can see it's kind of like a little croppy and more boxed, I guess. Yeah. There in the female version. Yeah. Or the women's version. The, yeah. So. In the original version. Yeah. The, nice. That's the, so that, I believe, I believe that's all of my works. All right. I'm so, super excited about this. Next up, then we have Happy Mail, which we talked about the stuff we got from Corey. We did. Oh. And then we got this in the mail. Oh my God, this was absolutely So this adorable. was from Beth, who we saw at um, Vogue. Yeah. She sent us this really cool... Um, card. Card. I don't know if it's... I'm assuming she... I don't know. It looks like a... a I don't know. Like but a, look. Like a sewing pattern. Super cool. Yeah. Um, she also sent us a picture of the three of us. I don't... I won't show that because you never know. Oh, if she wants her picture. Yeah. But sure. in it, she said she had meant to... Um, she, she made these. She made them for our tree. Um, oops. Hold on. So these are the we- Weasley sweaters. Aren't they adorable? They are so stinking cute. They're going to go on our, our uh, tree. Yep. These will go on our tree. Beth, thank you. That was yes. Like, thank you very much. We have two the trees. Sweetest thing. So this will go on our Harry Potter tree. Yeah. Oh, she had that beautiful vest on. Yeah, she had the vest on. It's the um. So our friend Shifting Sands is that what it's called? Something like that. Our friend Karen, she, um, has a pattern where it's. I think it's like a short rowy type of pattern, and it's meant to kind of replicate. It reminds me of the sand things that we would make at fairs. I used to love those. Sand art. That's sand what it art. is. It's sand art. Yeah. So it, it's meant to kind of mimic the look of that. And she had on a vest at Vogue, Vogue. using that same technique. Um, I know. I don't know. We don't have any more real estate to put anything down on. I do. Okay. Do we have any other Happy Mail? I don't have Happy Mail, but we okay. have an acquisition. All right. I... All right, so one acquisition that I made is I bought some additional Mayak of the... It's so nice. What is this? Baby Yak. Yeah. So this was to go in the project that I'm probably not using it for now. Um, I still have to figure that out. I, I just need to... I don't know what I need to do to knit, but um, that's what I bought it for. This is called Brick Clout, Brick Dust. Oh, it's so good. So... I it's already very have... close to that. Is that the same color? Close to the same color? No. 
This uh, is a much darker yeah. version. Um, this again is like a tomatoey so and good. orangey um, mm, kind of color. Of tomatoes and stuff. I'm so I don't know what I'm going to turn this into yet. I bought it because I thought I was going to need it to complete a project. Yeah. It still may go in it. I'm not sure. And then the last thing. Oh no. And then this came in the mail. This is the new Pom Pom Quarterly. I haven't looked at this at all, but that so, bag is absolutely adorable. I, yeah, the bag's cute. It's crocheted. crocheted. Um, and then the only thing I will say about this that is kind of... Like, there's some beautiful projects in here. Mm -hmm. I don't know... I don't know, if, with the exception of the bag, and I don't crochet, maybe that'd be something. And there's some socks in here. But there's no... Um, there's a hat. There's just no guys pictured in, or males. I know, it's so hard to see, like, your I, body you know, on. In here to show what some of these, like, patterns would look on a different body style or body type rather so that's the only thing about this that i'm not super thrilled about i think it's a beautiful publication it is and the, but, col the colors and the, there's a whole theme there like the colors very springy yeah type of colors and pastels and stuff right i i definitely see what you're saying so that's the only thing um you know but i can't i can't picture like that looks that's a cool hat but i couldn't picture myself in that it's, right i don't know what that would look like it's a beautiful top. It's yeah. really interesting construction. I don't know how it would look on us. Yeah. Um, and there is, yeah, I think the bag. But the colors are really pretty in, in all of these pictures. Is They're very um, spring-like and pastel-y, floral and stuff. Yeah, they're very light-looking. Yeah. Um, hold on, I'm going to see if I can. I don't know. Yeah, here's, you know, another sweater. It's, it's really actually pretty, there it's coming out a little blown outish it's almost like a fluorescent yellow with mm. a light pink beige maybe oh, beige? i think yeah, it kind of looks pinkish yeah oh you know what's really funny is it's the same yarn that's used in the <laughs> oslo hat in the pattern it's Filkalana or weta classic oh it's a black electric yellow and delicate orchid so yeah maybe a purple so yeah that came in and then, am I the only one with purchases? Do you have any purchases? Well, I have one that you got for me. Okay, is that all? That's it. Okay. And then last is, so the ladies over at Nidistry Nerds Podcast, Michelle and... We are very susceptible Katie. to enabling. We are. We enable you guys and people enable us. It is the circle of life. That's how it goes. This is how we keep all these businesses alive so that we can continue to make purchases. We're doing our part for society. Yes. So they talk about Portland Leather Co. Or Portland Leather. I'm not sure. And they mentioned how they just released some canvas bags. So we're suckers for canvas bags all of a sudden. So I went on and I bought each of us a bag to kind of match the ones that we got from Paradise Island. Like our color theme. Yeah. So I got the gray. It with black so handles good. and, and it, this is different it comes with a strap yeah uh, like a over the body strap and it has two pockets on the outside and it has two pockets on the inside on the interior ours are slightly different though because yours is waxed yeah. and mine is not so mine's not as like sturdy right this one can like sit up on the floor i'm sure yours can too no it can it's just not as like I could fold mine up. Yeah. And put mine away. So this, now that we've shown it, I'm going to put my sweater in there. Yeah, it's a good sweater bag. And I thought it would be good. I could put the whole GD cone in there. Oh, that's perfect. I thought it would be good too because we've been... Thanks, Kev. Taking day and weekend trips and we have yeah. some trips coming up. So it's just another bag available to us to um, take with us when we go. Mm-hmm. And then that's all the purchases in Happy Mail. So all we have left is what we've been reading and watching. See, you're right. It was probably a short one. I know. So watching is super easy for us. We finished The Last of Us. Yeah. So we're caught up on that. 
and then it's been our podcast and basketball. Right. And those that's literally all that we've watched. I don't think we've... We did Marvel. We did some Marvel movies just because there was like nothing... Oh, yeah. ...that we knew to watch or nothing that we wanted to. Yeah. So we just threw on some Marvel movies to have in the background uh, last weekend, I think. And that's about it. Mm-hmm. And then reading... But The Last of Us was really good. Last of Us is so good. Um, It's really interesting because it is, you know, like an apocalyptic zombie type of movie, but not a ton of zombies in it. No, the people were the the biggest threats, really. Yeah, you see zombies a couple times. So if you Mm -hmm. don't like zombies, I think this is actually an okay show to watch because you only really see them in a... Yeah. A couple episodes. And not for long periods of time. It's not like Walking Dead where they're everywhere and you see them a lot right 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 um and then so reading i finished i actually don't know what i had finished last time did i finish my the first book or had i just put it in the it's all it's in there it's updated so i had finished oh i must have the old one i do Okay. So I finished reading Prodigy by Marie Lu, and I also finished reading the third book in the series, um, which is, so it was Champion? Yes. Oh, no, I didn't update yours. No, that's okay. So I finished reading books two and three, in the Legend tr- Trilogy by Marie Lu. This is a young adult fiction. Takes place... I don't even know the year, actually. I feel like I read it and then I forgot it. It's quite far in the future. It takes place in the U.S. on the West Coast. But the U.S. has been divided into two countries. Mm-hmm. So the West Coast kind of... I don't know how far... I know it goes out to at least Denver. Maybe a little... I think Denver. Denver. Colorado so it may go just a little bit past Colorado so from Colorado West is considered the Republic of America and then from Colorado East is the colonies Um, there was a war which separated the country due to a natural disaster so the series follows two characters day and June um, Day comes from the poor sector. June comes from a w- very wealthy family. And they're very similar. Mm-hmm. They're um, both incredibly smart. And you find out a lot about... Um, like the way that these countries are run. And book three... Wow, it's really windy. Yeah, it is. And it's not going to be quite very warm today. I think like 40 is the high. Good thing we have Um, mitts to wear. Yeah, it's just, I thought it was just very smart. Book two, I feel like hit a little bit of a lull. In most books, that second book, I feel like it does, even like a TV series. Yeah. That second one just kind of struggles a little bit to keep up with the first one. Mm -hmm. But there was that one point where all of a sudden I was just like, okay, I'm a hundred percent invested and I just want to see what happens. And it was the same with the third book. The third book was just fantastic. And I, and I was really interested to see how they were going to wrap up the series. And I thought they, she did a really good job of completing the story for these two characters and, and some of the supporting cast in the, series and they introduced other countries so it was cool to see how this natural worldwide disaster affected other countries because in the first book you really only hear about the u.s and in book two and three at the beginning of it they show a map i was just going to mention that you were very interested to see the map is was different as each book went on so in book one the majority of it takes place in the the Republic of America. So where they're from. And um, there is a a plague 
they call it a plague on your house. It's kind of like I I feel like it's kind of like a an extreme version of the flu. Mm. And there's this whole like system of of how kids get placed Mm -hmm. into jobs and roles and there's a lot of dark stories behind where they are now and how they got to this point in their their society um so you're you're in the republic book two you learn more about the colonies and then in book three it starts off and it shows you a world map Mm -hmm. so you you get to go outside of the u.s and hear from some of these other countries uh i just thought it's such a smart series i thought i just thought it was done incredibly well and there is a fourth book i'm deciding on if i'm going to read it it's not part of the trilogy it takes place i think it might take place either directly after yeah or coincides a little bit with the end of yeah with the end of the third book but june is not one of the main characters in this fourth book she's she's still there and she has some impact on the story but she's not one of the main characters so that's why i'm kind of i don't know where i'm going to be with that i may um that's kind of like um shoot what was that series called oh gosh um his dark materials was it his dark materials no who's the main character of his dark is that the one with the animals that's no. the HBO Max show that yeah. we haven't we haven't watched. Right, but that's read. the so that book series, right, where they're in, you know, they they take the am I thinking of the right series where she the mate your main character, she's like the, you know, power of light. No, you're thinking of um Oh my gosh, the second season's I know, out it's like right, right now. on my head. It's, it's in the Grishaverse. Yes. Um Elena. Oh my god, you guys are all probably screaming yeah, at right? us right now. Yelena, the Darkling. Yeah, that whole that series. <sighs> You sure it's not his dark materials? No, it's not his dark materials. His... That's the one with the an- little animal friends? Um, yeah. All right, so anyway, but like the original... S- oh, it's on. A, I almost said it out loud. I almost said it. It was right there. Shadow? Shadow and Bone. Yes. Uh, yes. But what's the thing called? Anyway, you all know what I'm saying. So it's like that. Like the original trilogy, she is your main character, right? But the books that follow that, she's not the main character anymore. And so it was really interesting to, anyway, I, I hear what you're saying now that that later. Shadow and Bone. Shadow and Bone. Siege and Storm and then Rune and Rising were okay. the first three. But it's called the Shadow and Bone Trilogy. Okay. Yes. Okay. So that's what I've been reading. I highly recommend it. And apparently she has a bunch of other series that are really, really? good. Somebody recommend, uh, recommended one of them. Oh, great. I, that's definitely on my list. Um. I started, so I finished The Betrayed by Jeff Wheeler. It was, um, you know, I thought it was, I thought it was good. I feel like, I feel like I just, I don't know. I wasn't into it as much as I thought I should be because there was, there's definitely like a lot of magic and uh, it's part of like the, the Druid of Morrowind um, series yeah. or the Dawning of Morrowind mm-hmm. series. So basically it's like it's kind of like a prequel to a prequel to like his some some of his uh other series. There's a lot of series that take place in this universe, I guess. Um There was just like a lot of I felt like back and forth. Um I, I hate to say like oh that couldn't happen. Like cuz it's obviously I love to read fantasy, so a yeah. lot of this can't happen, but in that universe you know like how do you ever feel that way like we're in that universe like you they define that universe for you so in your head you're like yes that's totally feasible but there were a couple of things where just like oh that's not feasible in this universe like in their their set standards i don't i'm curious to see if anybody else feels like that too um but i just didn't feel like it was some of the some of the parts were not as realistic or they felt kind of rushed not fully developed I thought maybe um I was really like the there's a there's a little bit of a romance there too nothing like there's no there's nothing beyond like a smooch but um I feel like that kind of came out of left field and they spent a little bit too much time on that okay um instead of like big picture so 
I'm not super I'm not super interested in continuing um with that universe yet. Maybe I'll look at some other books, but I was definitely done when the book was done. I think I would give it a three out of five. It definitely was interesting. It helped to also have the audio version of that because it was mm-hmm. part of Kindle Unlimited, so I got the free audio book as well. And so I was able to um, to listen along, and I do like the narrator. I thought was pretty good. And it helped me understand because like everybody has a different name. Oh, I know. And so it was very difficult to like you're reading the name and you're like what does that even mean like how does that how do you even pronounce that to have the audiobook to pronounce that for me like is super helpful when everybody's book everybody's name in this book was completely um, unique yes so i finished that and i i really i was going to start legend the legend series but i wanted something that also had the audiobook component to it and usually a lot of the kindle unlimited books have that audio um audio audible that was a kindle unlimited though it wasn't no, so i was like you know what let me just try to find something else because i really want to i didn't want to spend any credits i didn't know if i had any credits left on audible so i found a book called the house witch it's by delam hatch is really the name there's no first name last name i don't oh, know if that is their first name or their last name i went to their um, like their Amazon page just to kind of like get some information about them and talks about them being a musician and liking liking music, but it really doesn't go into any kind of detail whatsoever. So not quite sure um, who they are, but The House Witch, I love it. It's set in a different like world. Um, you're in like the feudal period. So they're like kings and kingdoms and castles and stuff. And so your main character is a chef and they need a new royal cook. So he comes to the castle and pretty much the the kitchen is in shambles when he gets there. And there's um, there's a lot of bullying that's happening, especially from the knights to the like female staff. And so he kind of like steps in and, and flips some things around and uh, come to find out he is a witch. And in this universe, there are witches and there are mages. Those are your two magical um, powers or players or whatnot. And so witches have natural abilities and they, um, they don't really have to be trained to be a witch. You know, there's training available to obviously make them um, stronger. They provide like intense education for them and things like that. And they're more elemental. And then the mage kind of borrow magic in a way um and there's like kind of a feud between mages and witches and which one's better and which one's not however in like the kingdoms they look at mages as more educated and um more kind of like your traditional wizard type of of person so he's a witch and he's actually um a a mutant witch so which has been around for a long time and they found that most of them have like uh, elemental powers like i was saying so like fire earth air water so recently there's been some witches born with the ability to do different things that are not just elemental and they call them um mutant witches so he is basically his powers are based around the house and like the household and who he lives with and stuff so it's really cool. So he can do some really cool things and like protection and all of that. And um, I'm really, really enjoying it. It's a very long book. It's like 15 hours long or something. Oh wow! But uh, I think it's very interesting. They, 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 um, they market it as kind of like a lighthearted romantic comedy type of thing. And there's a lot of humor in it. It's very lighthearted, but sometimes it could be, you know, it's like, yeah, like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that that happened. It reminds me uh, very much of the Wizard's Butler. Do you remember that? Yep. I was talking about that. Just the writing style and the humor that's kind of built into. And I can't help but love these characters. The main character's name is Finn. So I'm almost done with that. I didn't give anything away. I'm really proud of myself, but I talked a lot about that book. I'm I'm liking it a lot. I think there are some some more to the series, so I'll be I'll be doing that as well. Nice. But yeah, I love it. I highly I recommend it. Um, wholeheartedly right now the house witch all right 
And I think that's it. Okay. We're done. We're done. And now we are going to get ready we for... We have 40 minutes till Tube Dudes Live. Yeah, we have to get prepared now for um, Tube Dudes. So, thank you guys for joining us. Um, we appreciate you sticking around. If you watched the Tube Dudes, thank you for watching Thank that you as in well. the future. And we will catch you all in uh, Fortnite. Fortnite. Bye, guys. Bye.